the Indonesian capital of Jakarta is facing a major crisis. The city is sinking at an alarming rate, with some estimates suggesting that it could be completely submerged by 2050. This is due to a combination of factors, including over-extraction of groundwater, land subsidence, and rising sea levels due to climate change, which has led to the sinking and damage of infrastructure. For example, the Walad Huna Mosque and some buildings in this area were sinking for years and abandoned by people after the area was finally blockaded by a giant seawall to protect the area from tidal floods. One of the main reasons why Jakarta is sinking is due to the over-extraction of groundwater. The city relies heavily on groundwater for its water supply, with around 60% of the city's population relying on wells for their daily water needs. However, the over-extraction of groundwater has led to the depletion of aquifers, which has caused the land to sink. This is because when water is pumped out of the ground, the weight of the overlying soil and rock compresses the aquifer, causing it to sink. Cleaning the rivers is also a huge challenge, as well as human waste. Most of the 13 rivers have been contaminated with industrial chemicals, including heavy metals, and it could take years just to stop the ongoing pollution. Another factor contributing to Jakarta's sinking is land subsidence. Land subsidence is the sinking or settling of the ground surface due to a variety of factors, including the removal of groundwater, the weight of buildings, and natural geological processes. In Jakarta, land subsidence is occurring at a rate of up to 25 centimeters per year in some areas, which is one of the fastest rates of land subsidence in the world. This is causing significant damage to buildings and infrastructure in the city and is also exacerbating flooding during the rainy season. Rising sea levels due to climate change are also contributing to Jakarta's sinking. As sea levels rise, the city's coastal areas are becoming more vulnerable to flooding and storm surges. This is because the land is sinking at the same time that sea levels are rising, which means that the city is effectively sinking twice as fast. This is a major concern for the city's residents, as around 40% of Jakarta's population lives in low-lying areas that are vulnerable to flooding. The consequences of Jakarta's sinking are severe. The city is facing an increased risk of flooding, which can cause significant damage to buildings and infrastructure, as well as putting people's lives at risk. The sinking of the city is also causing damage to roads, bridges, and other infrastructure, which is affecting the city's economy and making it more difficult for people to get around. In addition, the sinking of the city is causing salt water to intrude into the city's groundwater, which is making it more difficult to access clean water. To address the crisis facing Jakarta, a number of measures need to be taken. The first step is to reduce the over-extraction of groundwater. This can be done by promoting the use of alternative sources of water, such as rainwater harvesting and desalination. The second step is to address land subsidence by regulating the construction of buildings and infrastructure and by undertaking measures such as land reclamation and the injection of material into the ground to fill voids. Finally, Jakarta needs to address the impact of climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting adaptation measures such as the construction of seawalls and the development of early warning systems for flooding.